Hi guys. Well, it was a lovely morning. A little bit windy here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here. <clears throat> this otherwise pleasant. It is a fall morning, the fall of 2022. It is a Sunday morning here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. And it really is October 2nd. Today, I kept thinking it was October 2nd yesterday, but anyway, uh, but since it is Sunday morning here, uh, time for my weekly doomsday sermon, and once again, I want to uh, give a tip of the Doomer hat to uh, one of the newest uh, Doomer fish in the pool, and that is my... Uh, <clears throat> my buddy Elliot, Elliot Jacobson. Uh, I keep wanting to call Elliot uh, Elliot Richardson, but <laughs> anyway, Elliot uh, has this excellent uh, blog called "Watching the World Go By" B Y E, and uh, I guess this is Elliot. Is this your third? Doomsday Sermon of 2022, brother. Uh, I think uh, Elliot's right up there with Umer or Hack or Hake or Hawk. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so Elliot, uh, just in case you don't know this man, he has uh, some history, uh, I I'm assuming more from a mathematical perspective about the gambling and casino uh, <laughs> industries, <coughs> shall we say, and about probability and gambler's fallacy and all of this. So, uh, probably not surprising that Elliot uh, came down this rabbit hole fairly recently and started this excellent blog <clears throat> but for those of you who are not aware, or are aware of Elliot, this is his latest uh, sermon from a, just a couple of days ago, from September 30th, titled, Your Moment of Doom. Your Moment of Doom. And he starts out uh, with a quote from Albert Camus from The Fall. Quote, Let's not worry. It's too late now. It will always be too late. Fortunately, <laughs> I need to go back and read The Fall. It's been, how many decades has it been since I've read some Camus? Anyway, uh, we will might come back to Albert for a future sermon, but take it away, Elliot, <clears throat> and talk about your moment of doom. <clears throat> we are stampeding towards doom. That's the big we, as in humanity, as in all of us, together, collectively engaging in an unstoppable onslaught against ecosystems, climate systems, vast regions of ice, superheated acidified oceans, permafrost, rainforest, and every other life support system. Uh, you left out coral reefs, but I guess uh, that's understood. <clears throat> it is our, meaning humans, collective assault on a billion years of sequestered carbon. It is all of us, the big fat, resource-devouring, and planet-eating, selfish we, consuming everything of value as the sixth great extinction takes its course, leaving the habitability of the planet as a legacy to a select few species. I think it's a good century to be a jellyfish. <clears throat> In my Twitter account, I post a daily series called Your Moment of Doom. 
In this series, I scour the daily news for an unlikely or novel consequence of climate change that was posted in the last 24 hours. <clears throat> From the future of ketchup to an explosion in termite populations, my mission is to give my followers a larger view of what's happening to our planet. And in searching for these stories, I also educate myself on collapse, helping to keep my awareness as fully current as possible. My moment of doom for today concerned heat wave adaptation research in the wine industry. One thing I have learned that is certain, I will never know the full scope of collapse. Well, you, you, might, uh, you might know it uh, in the next 24 hours, brother. <clears throat> this search for daily doom has taught me that to fully grasp what is coming is simply not possible. It is an exercise in imagination that we as humans are not equipped to visualize. Take the last few months, for example. In Pakistan, the record monsoon season left over 20 million people homeless. This recent article in The Guardian talks about the ongoing impact of this flooding on over 16 million children. Then. There's this article on last summer's heat wave and drought in China, which includes this stunning quote, <clears throat> quote, There is nothing in world climatic history which is even nominally comparable to what is happening in China, close quote. And now we have Hurricanes Fiona followed by Ian. <clears throat> As I type this, over 2.6 million humans in Florida have lost their power and an entire region of the state has been decimated, wiped out. And yet, the world goes on. Here's the thing. As bad as these events were, the loss of life was minimal. We did not see millions die. We did not see tens of millions looking for a welcoming country to accept them, feed them, and house them as refugees. We did not see them turned away, blocked at the border by militant nationalists left to suffer in a homeland that has become an uninhabitable death trap. And that is what lies ahead. What we don't know is when, where, or how the first big one will happen. We have to, not sure what uh, Elliot's definition of big one is if uh, Hurricane Ian didn't uh, do the trick. <clears throat> Horrific events will not happen in some distant future to your grandchildren's grandchildren. They will, they, meaning your grandchildren's grandchildren, will never exist to experience these events. The coming first global cataclysm will happen sometime over the next few decades and may happen next year or even tomorrow. That's the certainty and uncertainty we are living with. <clears throat> I find those who make firm date certain predictions of planetary doom or have a fixed formula for action that will save us to be far less credible than those who live and cope as best they can with uncertainty. And for me, as a retired mathematician and consultant to the casino industry, 
uncertainty means considering probabilities and giving odds using whatever information is available to equate collapse to a roll of the dice or a spin of the roulette wheel. The Climate Casino gives my best estimates of odds for certain events. It is my attempt to say what I know about the future using the language of probabilities. I then post polls on Twitter for people to fake wager. I reconcile the wagers in fake payouts after the time stamp for the event is passed. What I have learned is that people are eager to wager that doom is coming sooner rather than later. Most people wager on the side of the worst case outcome without understanding that the odds are against them. With this knowledge, I move the lines towards doom and am confident, at least so far, that I have got the right side of the wager. The Climate Casino continues to earn a healthy fake profit, but sooner or later, I am going to get it very wrong. This year, we have seen an ongoing series of climate events described as once every thousand years. From rainfall rates to temperature anomalies to the intensification rates of cyclones to heat waves to droughts to glacial loss, the odds are changing. Uncertainty in a casino means you roll two dice and on average, one in six rolls will be a seven. On our planet right now, uncertainty means that whatever odds you thought were based on scientific research and the historical record, those are not the odds anymore. The sequence of catastrophes we are experiencing is accelerating. Their intensity and duration are growing. We can, we can look back at the worst humanity has ever had to endure over its long evolutionary path and say it, you know what's coming, will be much worse than that catastrophic events with odds that are once every 10,000 years or once every million years lie ahead for us over the coming dozen or so years. Roll the dice and have them both land perfectly balanced on an edge, a freak circumstance that has never been seen before. That is what's coming. That is what will become common. <clears throat> we live in a world where the odds are 100% doom, 100% collapse, 100% the end of civilization and the only question is how that sequence of events will play out. We can gamble on the big one being a blue ocean event, a methane bomb from the, I guess this is the East Arctic Sea clathrates, or Siberian permafrost, the sudden collapse of the Thwaites Glacier, or any other tipping point. I have posted odds for some of these. We can gamble on it being some climate event like a flood, drought, or heat wave. I posted odds for some of these as well. We can gamble on a political end like nuclear war or sabotage of a nuclear reactor, water supply, electric 
grid or the internet backbone, I have no odds posted for such events, but the fact that they are even possibilities is soul crushing. There are too many possibilities, but what we do know is that the first big one is coming soon. Humanity is never going to change its stampede towards doom. Our uncontrollable genetic drive is personal survival to fortify our own lives at the expense of other lives, to enrich our personal access to resources to make sure our genes are the ones that survive into the future. <clears throat> this is the concept of the selfish gene as first articulated by Richard Dawkins. The selfish gene is not something we can evolve past by a sufficiently well-written essay or a political movement or by bringing awareness to the accelerating catastrophes worldwide. Our genetics ensure we will never wake up from this nightmare to a world where every first world consumer changes their lifestyle to minimize their carbon footprint. Sounding a lot like Bill Gates there, brother. Where world leaders declare a climate emergency, where corporations give up their evil profiteering, and where political compromise for the good of all, and where politicians compromise for the good of all. And even if all of this happened, it is too late. As Camus said, it has always been too late. I don't have a solution. I don't have a plan or even a vague idea of what to suggest as a plan. I can't even define the meaning of plan in a world inundated by major collapse events that will be viewed as minor events next year. But I can breathe, and as long as I have breath, I will do what I can, I can to preserve the habitability of the planet for one more day. <laughs> yeah. One more day on the planet. Oh, man, and I guess uh, now that I've gotten that off my chest, uh, I have to go preserve the habitability of the planet by uh, going and having a big brush fire burning off this... Uh, rotten willow tree that brother group was kind enough to cut down for me. Anyway, I highly suggest you get out there and burn all the brush piles you can while you still can. Amen, brother Elliot. Someday we'll bring uh, Elliot onto the show. Uh, <laughs> I've told Elliot that what we need to do, I think what we need to do is abandon any attempt at a script. I'm going to knock back a couple of margaritas. I'm going to get Elliot to knock back a couple of shots of whatever. I think he might be a whiskey drinker. And we're just going to sit here uh, and have a convert, hit the record button and have a conversation. Uh, <laughs> between two doomers enjoying their uh, tequila shots while they still can. My guys.